I need to talk to you guys about the One Football app. See, the One Football app is the best football app there is out there, and I use it for a load of different reasons. It's great for transfer rumours, team news, and starting 11s, which is actually really useful when I'm making these tactical videos. On top of that, you can now watch game highlights and even live matches, all on the One Football app. And believe it or not, it actually gets even better than that, because now you can do it all for free if you use the link in the description down below. So make sure to get in the description, press the link and download the One Football app right away. Trust me, you guys will not regret downloading this app. It really is great. Hey guys, welcome back to the AJ Analysis channel, where today I want to start with a bit of an apology for my voice. Um, I overslept this morning, so I've pretty much woken up and instantly pressed record, so my voice might be a little bit off in this video. But today we are talking about Manchester United versus Southampton, and I just want to get straight into the tactics, and let's start with Southampton and what they look to do on the ball. So... Southampton had Bazanou and Goal, who's a very good player with the ball at his feet. So Manchester United looked to put them under a bit of pressure. And basically, the ball would go one way to one of the centre-backs. And then Rashford would split them like this. And then Bruno Fernandes would come across and cover. Eriksen would push up. And McTominay would be like this. And we can see that United are basically man for man, stopping Southampton from really playing the ball out from the back. But that didn't really seem to bother Southampton, because any time Rashford would force them one way and the passing options were cut off, they would just send the ball on whether it's from Salasu going up this way or Bella Kachap this way. And in this game, there was a real sense of Southampton trying to target Lissandra Martinez with Che Adams up against him. And there were times where Che Adams was able to bring the ball down on his chest, but actually Lissandro won all of his aerial duels, 5 out of 5. And also Varane on the other side done a very good job. But that was basically the plan from Southampton. If you can't play the ball out and build possession, then send the ball long, and then even if you don't win the first contact, then you might win the second ball. And this is where they've done a good job and the likes of Lavia, Ward, Prowse and that were able to now get further forward. Now, to be fair, I think Scott McTominay deserves a lot of credit, because he put in a very, very good defensive performance. We'll see a bit later that on the ball he didn't do too much, but defensively, he done a really good job of getting on these second balls. So if Che Adams did win the header, and win the knockdown, McTominay was always there on the second ball to sweep up and protect the Manchester United defence. And that was certainly an improvement on what we've seen from him in the past. So instantly, that was a good start for United defensively, even if they didn't win the header, they were winning the second ball. But actually, 9 times out of 10, they did win that first header. And whilst United did deal with that long ball on a lot of occasions, there were, of course, situations where Southampton were able to get control of the ball, and they actually had a decent amount of possession during the game. However, what we can see is that United were defending in quite a narrow shape here. If we look at the shirts in white, they're in quite a narrow defensive shape. But what this did mean was that Southampton were able to push their fullbacks really high and wide up the pitch. Now, we know that Sancho in particular, but also Alanga on the other side, they don't massively track their men, and we know that Gineppo is more of a winger, so he was happy to get forward. And Walker Peters is a very attacking right back. And what it allowed Southampton to do was to get into these advanced positions and almost 2v1 the Manchester United fullbacks, which then meant that we saw plenty of crosses into the box. Now, this is always a threat and a danger for the Manchester United defence because we know that De Gea is quite a passive goalkeeper in these situations. So, particularly when it comes into the six yard box, a lot of keepers will come and claim the cross. But De Gea doesn't necessarily do that. So it did mean that Varane and Lissandro were often having to drop deep into their own box to win the ball. And this was even more dangerous when Ward-Prowse was getting forward as well, because we know when he gets himself in this little space here, that his delivery into the box really is wicked. And it caused a lot of issues for United. However, I actually thought that they dealt with them pretty well. And overall, that was the story of the game defensively for United. I thought that everything that Southampton threw at them, they, they kept... They dealt with it, sorry, pretty well. I thought they'd done a really good job defensively. Southampton had a few moments, and De Gea made some really good saves, to be fair to him. But Southampton, they done well for two-thirds of the pitch. They got the ball forward well. They won a lot of their duels. But they just really lacked any quality in the final third to really create a big chance for Che Adams. He was kind of feeding off scraps, and he was fighting for every ball. And again, United deserve credit for that, because it was them that were putting this fight up and stopping him from taking control and really getting any real chances in the box. I am just going to quickly interrupt because we do have another sponsor for today's video, and that is JerseyFIFA.com, the website you need to head to right away to get yourself the latest and greatest football shirts, all at an extremely affordable price. The link will be in the description below, so head there right away to get yourself a great shirt, again at a great price. Now back to the video. For large parts of the game, it was the same for Manchester United as well, and this game was largely based on duels and individual battles, man-to-man -man battles, things like that. So when United had the ball, Southampton didn't press as high as what they have done in the past, and that meant that United were able to take the time on the ball here, and just kind of play the ball around the back, not really progressing the ball forward at all. However, Southampton did have a pressing trigger. So typically, if Martinez was on the ball, Armstrong would be kind of here, Ward-Prowse near Eriksen, Adams kind of floating in between, Aribo on McTominay, and then Lavia on Bruno Fernandes. 
However, as soon as the ball went over to Rafa Varane, that was the trigger for Adams to move across to Martinez. Aribo would then squeeze up on McTominay, and then if Fernandes dropped in, Lavia would also drop in to make sure there were no easy passing options. And what this done was it meant that United couldn't play the ball out from the back because everyone was so totally marked, totally marked, totally marked, that there was no way for United to progress the ball. And this was particularly for the first 45 minutes. United just couldn't find a way to progress the ball forward. And again, what this meant, similar to Southampton, was that the centre-backs were playing the ball long. So if Martinez got the ball here, Adams would press from this side. Martinez is forced to send the ball long. And with Rashford up front, no disrespect for Rashford, I like him as a player a lot, he is not a centre-forward. And what this meant was that Belica Chap in particular really dominated him. Now, Salasu and Belica Chap are both very physical, athletic centre-backs, and are both very good in the air as well. And any time Rashford got into this sort of situation where the ball was sent up long to him, Belica Chap basically just headed it back where it came from. Or, if the ball went in behind, Belica Chap had the recovery pace to make sure he got back and won the ball. And basically, that was the story of the first half. Southampton were pressing man for man on these Manchester United players, and there was no real solution for Manchester United, they simply couldn't get the ball. However, Ten Hag is an intelligent manager, and there are two ways that you can beat a man-for-man -man system. One is to rotate positions, because of course, if you're man-for-man -man and you move here, then it drags the system out of place, right? Because you're tracking them. So that's one way you can do it, and the other is to take more touches on the ball and to dribble, because again, that just, dis just disrupts a pressing system. And that's what we saw in the second half. So as I said there, we saw a few tactical tweaks from Ten Hag at half-time, and it helped, mass uh, helped United massively in the second half. So one thing we saw instantly was Fernandes would move slightly wider, which would drag Lavia out, which meant Rashford was now able more of a feet option. So before he was constantly going in behind and having no success against the centre-backs, now he was dropping into this little area here, able to get the ball into feet and just pop a pass off out wide. And instantly that gave United a way of progressing the ball. Something else that we saw which was actually really interesting was the central midfielders would occasionally swap over, swap position. So McTominay would come to the left-hand side and Eriksen would go to the right. And that sounds really simple, but when you're doing man-for-man -man marking, it gives the players the, on the, uh, off the ball a decision, sorry. So Aribo was previously man-marking McTominay. He now has to decide, do I follow McTominay across, or do I now switch on Ericsson? And it sounds like a very minor thing, but it causes just a split second of hesitation. And when you play a team with the quality that United have, that is all it needs. One split second of indecision off the ball gives United space to now move the ball forward. And again, with Rashford now offering in defeat, it meant that United were starting to find ways to move the ball forward and start to threaten the Southampton defence. And that is actually what we saw for the goal, with a slightly different pattern. So this goal was very much built out from the back, and it started with Sandra Martinez on the ball here. He was pressed by Jay Adams, and then the ball went across to Rafa Varane. Now, if you remember what we were talking about in the first half, this was the pressing trigger, typically for Southampton to then step forward and apply the pressure. However, Aribo couldn't do that on this occasion because McTominay moved his position. And like I said, when you play a man-to-man -man system, the opposition moving moves the opposition. So if McTominay moves across here, Aribo now has to move across. And that is what we saw. So Aribo moves across on McTominay, and now Rafa Varane has more time to step forward. He will step forward into this area. Armstrong comes across to try and... So Armstrong was previously dealing with the wide ball. He now comes across because Varane is stepping forward. And Langer gets the ball in here. Alanga makes a driving run, which again, like we said, taking extra touches on the ball is key, because it dragged Gineppo out of position, and then it left room for Dallo to overlap down the right wing. And this is what we'll see here. So here we can see Lissandro Martinez playing the ball across to the right to Rafa Varane, and Aribo and the other Southampton players are distracted in the middle here, because both McTominay and Eriksen are, are shifted slightly to the left-hand side, and we can see the space that this is going to open up for Varane to take the ball forward. That is what happens, and now we see Armstrong. Previously, he would have been dealing with the ball Y2 Alanga had Aribo been on Varane, but he wasn't, so Armstrong felt the need to address the situation. He couldn't let Varane just walk forward through the centre of the pitch, so he had to go over and mark him. However, this then left Alanga free to receive the pass. Alanga picks up the ball and drives forward, and again we can now see that Armstrong is out of position. El Yunusi, again at left back, he can't allow Alanga to just drive forward at the heart of the defence, so he attempts to defend narrow, and you've got to remember, Gineppo is not a natural defender, so he steps out into this area and it backfires horribly, because we can now see Dallo has room out wide down the right-hand side. The ball is played down the right-hand side, it gets crossed into Bruno Fernandes, or more of a cutback, I should say, to Bruno Fernandes, who finishes brilliantly on the first-time finish into the back of the net, and that was actually enough to get United the win. Overall, it was a bit of a weird game, because after that goal, Southampton took control again, and were putting a lot of crosses into the box, but United dealt with them really well. The likes of Casemiro coming on late in the game certainly helped, and then the energy of Fred as well provided even greater defensive support. 
But like I said, it was a bit of a weird game because it was largely one versus one situations. However, in the split moment, a 15 minute spell where it really mattered, United were able to manipulate the Southampton shape and that was because of the tactical tweaks from Ten Hag at half time, telling players to take more time on the ball and take extra touches, but also getting players to move position to drag the press out of shape. That was the key, it, like I said, it was just a 15 minute spell where United were really on top, but at 15 minutes alone, the tactical tweak from Ten Hag was enough to get the win and secure an important 3 points. And yeah, that was basically how the game was won. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Was this a good performance? Does the performance matter? Or was it more about the 3 points at this stage in the season? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next one.